Several offshore platforms operate near Sakhalin. Lunskoya A, the first stationary gas platform in Russia. And oil platforms, Piltun Ostovskaya A and Piltun Ostovskaya B. 24 7, day and night, in summer and winter, work is conducted pushing the limits of science and technology. Oil and gas are extracted to the surface and transported to the mainland for processing and further use. That is how the seabed gets developed. By extracting power from the water's depths. Offshore platforms like Lunskoya A, or Lun A for short, are more often reached by air rather than by sea. Incidentally, you will simply not be admitted on board a helicopter unless you first complete specialized helicopter underwater escape training. After all, takeoff and landing are considered quite dangerous. The platform itself is a full-fledged mini-city. Even after a week, you still lose your way around these tangled corridors, stairs, levels, and rooms. However, this colossus may be generally divided into two large areas, production and accommodation. The first area has everything for hydrocarbon production and platform operation. The second offers everything for comfortable living cabins, leisure, meals, fast internet. It seems that you are in a hotel on the mainland rather than on a reinforced concrete tech island in the open sea. On a sunny day, it seems like a stone's throw from the shore, but this feeling is misleading. In fact, it's 14 kilometers to the Sakhalin shore, and the distance from the highest platform point to the seabed is 152 meters, higher than the Great Pyramid, higher than Europe's tallest Ferris wheel, and just a bit shorter than the famous Shukhov Tower in Moscow. Particular interest is stirred by the platform supports, or in scientific terms, gravity-based structures. These are gigantic structures resting on the seabed, designed to withstand both the weight of the platform and the pressure of pack ice in winter, and even potential seismic loads. Moreover, each support is also a structure with internal spaces and communications. For example, the first support has seawater pumps, they desalinate water for further use on the platform. The third support has the main export pipelines for transporting gas to Sakhalin. The fourth one has embedded sewage system caissons. And the second support has wells for hydrocarbon production. In total, there are one, two, three, in some, 24 wells, each with a depth between 2,000 and 3,000 meters. The Lunskaya field, just like all the others, by the way, is not a single large cavity like a cave. 
but an area of scattered, finely porous rocks like sandstone. Thus, wells are drilled down and in different directions to maximize the gas extraction area. And the distances are enormous. Some wells extend their reach as far as nine kilometers away from the Lunskoya A platform. But how are multiple holes made in the ground if the platform itself is stationary? The answer is obvious. The drilling rig is mobile. This means it can move left, right, forwards, and back. If we take a look at this whole thing from above, we can see that it moves inside a rectangle. And if we put this rectangle in a circle, we will get a cross-section of one of the gravity supports of the platform. Drilling is ultimately a high-tech process. It is fully or almost fully automated. Mechanisms are operated from a protected operator's cabin. But the production of hydrocarbons is not just about drilling. Gas conditioning for future transportation to the mainland is no small task either. We are so used to pure gas at home that we have no idea what it looks like underground. Down there, it's a heck of a mix of methane, sand, produced water, and various impurities like condensate. Directing such natural gas to the main export pipelines is strictly forbidden. Pipelines can be damaged quickly if nothing is done, for example, with produced water in gas. Here is why. Gas flow in the pipelines is accompanied by the temperature fluctuating up and down. The pressure also fluctuates up and down. As a result, water vapor condenses into almost snowflakes that stick to the inner pipe walls in turn. Well, not into snowdrifts, though it looks similar, but into gas hydrate plugs, which clog the pipe tightly. One such clog means a full stop for gas production and transportation. Now then, in order to prevent this, natural gas is conditioned here on the platform. For example, by adding monoethylene glycol. A substance well known to drivers, monoethylene glycol or ethylene glycol is an antifreeze agent. It is part of windscreen washer fluids and brake fluids so that the fluids don't freeze in the cold. It's the same here. Ethylene glycol prevents water, which remains in natural gas, from freezing. Scientifically, it prevents gas hydrates in the pipeline. Monoethylene glycol is added here, and after that, we can say that's it. The natural gas is ready to leave the platform. It leaves through one of the platform's supports. Through two pipes on the bottom of the Sea of Okhotsk, having reached Sakhalin, the gas is subject to multi-step drying and separation processes. All of them take place at the Onshore Processing Facility, abbreviated as OPF. Here they are, the two pipes from Loon A platform. By the way, the distance from here to the coast of the Sea of Okhotsk is 6 kilometers and 46 kilometers to the nearest inhabited area. The region here is extremely wild and deserted. A common question asked here is, have you seen bears on the way? What the? So, what is the purpose of the OPF? We remember that gas and oil leave platforms and reach the mainland almost unchanged. For example, gas from the Lunskoya A contains ethylene glycol, produced water and condensate, and a blend of liquid hydrocarbons. 
while crude oil from the northern offshore platforms has associated gas. Now, this whole mix must be separated. The verb comes from the Latin word separatio. Here is the first separator. It is called a three-phaser here because it divides natural gas into three components. Methane, condensate, and water with ethylene glycol. Well, simply put, gas is separated from liquid. Yet nothing is dumped or discarded. The OPF is eco-friendly and interconnected with all facilities in the chain of production, conditioning, and transportation of hydrocarbons. It even generates electricity on its own by burning natural gas produced on the platform. But that's not all. The energy from these gas turbines is enough to operate the entire facility and the offshore platform as well. From here, electricity flows back along an underground cable to Lunskoya A. This is an operations diagram of the whole OPF complex. Ethylene glycol is dewatered and directed back to the Loon A platform for reuse. Condensate extracted from natural gas is blended with oil to form a single product. Purified from water, ethylene glycol and condensate, treated natural gas is fed into a separate pipeline. This is how the whole system works. But there's a catch. Any gas field has reservoir pressure, in other words, underground pressure. For example, it is 110 bar in different wells for the Lunskoya field, while it can reach 115, 117, 120, even 125 bar for other ones, for now. But as gas is produced, reservoir pressure naturally decreases. And gas should be fed to the onshore facility at a pressure of at least 86 and a half bar. What do we do in this case? The answer is to build another facility, an OPFC, compression station. It will be integrated into the OPF. This is the very place where the compression station is connected to the onshore processing facility by its main pipelines. That is, currently natural gas is supplied this way, directly to the OPF. And after the commissioning of the OPF compression station, the flow will be like this, getting the necessary pressure from the compression station compressors and then returning here and then to the onshore processing facility. At the heart of the OPF compression station are powerful gas compressor units. They will compensate for the drop in Lunskoya gas pressure. Literally, as the name of the station implies, compress it. In very simple words, the purpose of the OPF and the OPF compression station can be conveyed in three words. Separate, compress, and feed. That is, separate initial crude hydrocarbons from the offshore platforms into their component elements, maintain pressure, and dispatch the products such as oil and gas with over 90% methane further along the process chain. So the story ends where it began. Let us recall, here are the gas pipes from the Loon A platform. There is an oil and gas pipeline from the northern offshore platforms of Sakhalin. This is what is fed to the OPF. And literally a few meters away, there's the outlet. A pipe with oil to which condensate was added here, and a big yellow gas pipe. Well, Godspeed! The oceans cover over 70% of the Earth. But if water used to be a barrier to hydrocarbon extraction, 
Now it facilitates hydrocarbon transportation to people all over the world for warmth and comfort. <laughs>